In this video, we will learn how to balance redox reactions. And so, if you remember back to regular chemistry, when we balance reactions, we said we need to follow the law of conservation of mass. And what that says is that we need to have the same number of each type of atom on each side of our reaction. And that is true. That's still what balancing a redox reaction is going to be. But what balancing redox reactions uh, does for us is that when we have charges going on, we also need to balance the charge on each side of our reaction. And so if I have a reaction where I have A going to B plus C, and let's say A is 2 plus, well then B might be uh, 2 plus or plus 2, and then C could be 0, and so that would work. Or B could be plus 1, and C could be plus one, and so that uh, product side is plus two. But what could not be the case is like B just being neutral and C being neutral. That would technically not be balanced. And so for um, redox reactions where something's being oxidized and something's being reduced, this method will allow us to balance, um, to make sure that our charges get balanced. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you need to identify what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. And so a good way to do that is just go through and get oxidation numbers. And so it looks like manganese is going from plus seven to plus two. So what is being reduced is manganese in uh, permanganate. And then what's being oxidized is bromide. Okay, it's going from a minus one to a zero oxidation state. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate my overall reaction into the, my half reactions. And how I do that is I said this critical step, which says, okay, bromine's being oxidized, so I wanna find my bromine things. Those guys go into a reaction. And then um, manganese is being reduced, so I'll have my manganese half reaction. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, focus on balancing the elements that are actually changing oxidation state. So um, we're not going to worry about hydrogen or oxygen right now. Okay. So when I do this, I've got a two there. So I need to have two bromine. So I put a two there. And then I have one manganese, one manganese. So I'm good. Again, oxygen is not balanced, but that is something that we'll worry about later. And then my next step is to balance any oxygens. To balance oxygen, I'm going to add water to the side of the equation that needs more oxygen. If we think about it, water is H2O. So if I need one oxygen, water gives me one oxygen. So in this case... I have four oxygens, so I must need four waters, okay? And then my bromine half reaction has no oxygen, so we must be good. And then now I'm gonna balance hydrogen. To do that, we're gonna make an assumption. We're gonna always assume that these are under acidic conditions unless they say they're basic, okay? We're just gonna assume that they're acidic, and we'll learn how to do basic later. But um, to balance hydrogens, we're going to add hydrogen ions, which are H plus one. And so we have no hydrogen, so we're good with bromine. And then here, we just added eight hydrogens with our four waters, so we must need eight H pluses on the other side, okay? A lot of people get are pretty good at this uh, up until this point. And then this is the point that if someone's gonna mess up, I would bet money that this is where it would be. And this is where it's a Mr. Payne original, and I call this the charge box. So we have to balance charge. So what I do is I make a charge box, and I say, okay, this whole side, a lot of people would say negative one, and I'd say that's incorrect. We have two negative ones, because we have two bromines, so that charge is negative two. And then this charge is neutral. Over here, where I just circled, we have eight positives, one negative, so that's an overall... Uh, plus seven. And then over here, I don't have my waters. Oopsie. Um, 
I have a plus two. So I have to balance charge. The way I'm gonna do that is um, add an electrons. So here, to get the charge to be the same, we will add two electrons to the product side, okay? That'll give me a two E minus, or two electrons, and so we'll hit that same negative two charge. Our charges do not need to be zero, but they just need to be the same. And then here, the difference between these are five, so I must need to add five electrons, and I'll do that uh, on the left-hand side or the reactant side. Okay, I know I've done some things correct. Let's see if this makes sense. First of all, we said, we said that bromine is oxidized, okay? So it must be losing electrons. There are the two electrons that it is losing. Let's make uh, sure that two makes sense. Well, bromine goes from negative one to zero, so each bromine loses one electron. But we have two electrons, so there are the two electrons that are being lost. Okay, that makes sense. Now, let's look at my manganese. We said manganese is going from plus seven to plus two. We said manganese is being reduced. Let's see if that makes sense. This is a difference of five manganese. Each manganese is gaining five electrons. There's only one manganese, so we should see a total of five electrons being gained or on the reactant side because they're being gained. So that makes sense. Now, we just need to add up these two reactions and notice how I've done this, and you'll see in my couple of example problems, I've kept my arrows, my yields arrows on the same side of my reaction. This is so things get lined up. If I had an arrow over here and then an arrow over here, it's easy to get things mixed up on which side they're on. I just need to add up these reactions, but the one rule that we're gonna follow is that we don't have electrons in our overall reaction. Electrons will always cancel. So what we need to do is find the least common multiple between our electrons, which is five and two. So I'll multiply this first reaction by five, this bottom one by two, and that'll get my electrons to cancel. And when I multiply by five and multiply by two, this needs to become 10, five, 10. This needs to become 10, 16, two, two, and eight. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do, that needs to be two, that needs to be two. And then this needs to be eight, is I'm gonna see what cancels. My electrons absolutely will cancel. And then nothing else occurs uh, on opposite sides that will cancel. Okay, so my overall reaction, and I'm not gonna worry about basic reactions in this video, so we can just ignore that for right now, will be AH plus plus two permanganates, plus 10 bromides, goes to two manganese plus two ions plus eight waters, plus Oops. I've done something wrong. Oh, here's what it is. I forgot to change. I was, the hydrogens were messing me up, but I forgot it's 16, and so I needed to change that. Okay, plus, because I was thinking 8 times 2 should be 16, so what did I do, do wrong with the hydrogens, but we're good, plus five bromides. Okay, so I just went through an example problem, and now I just want to um, practice. And um, I want to do, we'll just see what we can get through. I want to do an easy one first, and then I want to do a more difficult one. So Here's what we would do is this says balance the following redox reactions. Um, so the first step we're going to do is go through get oxidation states. 
it is easy when we just have one element. And then we're going to say ag plus 1 is reduced. And then sn is oxidized. So I'm going to break apart my silvers. I'm going to go ag plus 1 goes to ag. And then sn goes to sn plus 2. I'm going to balance everything except hydrogen and oxygen. So my silvers are balanced. My tin is balanced. And so now I'm going to balance oxygen and hydrogen, which I don't have here. But that's what my next steps would be if I did. And then now I'm going to do charge box. So here's how I do charge box. I say my entire left-hand side of my silver is plus 1. My entire right-hand side of silver is 0. And then for 10, my entire left-hand side is 0. My entire right-hand side is plus 2. So that tells me exactly how many electrons I need to add. Um, electrons are negative, so this makes sense. I need one electron here. That makes some sense because silver is reduced. And then 10 is going from Sn to Sn plus 2. So to get that to balance out, I need two electrons. Again, that makes sense. Those are the two electrons that 10 loses. And then um, I'm going to add up my reactions. The only rule when we add up reactions is that electrons must cancel. So I need to multiply uh, my silver reaction by 2. So this will become 2, 2, and 2. My electrons are the only thing that have to cancel. Nothing else cancels here. So my overall reaction is 2Ag plus 1 plus Sn goes to 2Ag plus Sn plus 2. And so that is our overall reaction. Let's look at B where things get a little bit more complicated. I'm going to go through and I'm going to get oxidation states. And I'm going to trust that you're good on that. You can go back to the notes 1 video if you're a little bit shaky in oxidation states. Okay, and so now when I look at my oxidation states, I say chromium in chromate, CR or dichromate, excuse me, is reduced. And then the carbon in, this is called methanol, CH3OH, is oxidized. Okay, so let's take my chromium things and put that in a reaction. And then let's take my carbon things and put them in a reaction. And what you may be wondering is these look really strange. And I agree, they do. Um, the reason why they look kind of strange is the oxygens are, are kind of all over the place. But remember, we have a way to balance oxygens if things are weird. Okay, so my first step is going to be to balance everything that's not hydrogen and oxygen. And so I look here in my first reaction, and I say my chromiums need to be balanced, so I'll put a 2 there. And then I look at my second reaction, and my carbons are good. So now I'm going to focus on oxygen in my first reaction here. My first half reaction is really what I should be calling it. But uh, in my first half reaction, I have seven oxygen. So I need, let me think about this. Each water gives me one oxygen. So I need seven waters. And then in my bottom reaction, my oxygens uh, look balanced. And so I'll, I'll leave them there. Now I'm going to balance uh, hydrogens. And the way I do that is by adding hydrogen ions. I need 14 hydrogen ions here. And then in my bottom reaction, I have 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 2. So I only need two more hydrogen ions. So I've done that. Now I've balanced everything. All the atoms are balanced, but I need to balance charge. And so the way I do that is I make a charge box. Okay. And so I say this entire left-hand side of this reaction... 
I have 14 positives, 1 negative 2, so that's a plus 12 overall. Over here, a lot of people would say plus 3. I'd say water is neutral, so that's easy enough. But these chromiums are really a plus 6 because there's two positive 3s. So I know I need to add 6 electrons over here. Okay, that changes this to a plus 6. Now they're balanced. They don't need to be 0. They just need to be balanced. Uh, on my second half reaction, this side is 0. And then the right-hand side is plus 2. So I need plus 2 electrons. This, we should always be able to make sure it makes sense. Because if we look here, carbon went from negative 2 to 0. So it lost two electrons. There are the two electrons that it lost. Chromium went from plus 6 to plus 3, so it gained three electrons, but there's two chromiums. So there are the total of six that were gained, three for each chromium. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to add up the reaction. The only thing that has to cancel is electrons, and so this... Uh, reaction here, this bottom reaction, I'm going to multiply by 3. So that'll become 3, 3, 6, and then 6. And we'll add up the reactions. My electrons absolutely have to cancel. And then my hydrogen ions partially cancel, so 14 minus 6 would be 8. And I tried to write that that did not work. Okay, nothing else cancels, so my overall reaction is 8 hydrogen ions plus dichromate plus 3 methanol, CH3OHs, goes to 2 chromium plus 3s plus 7 waters plus 3 CH2Os, which that's formaldehyde.